You can definitely feed me. You know, one of the things about Saskatchewan is that it doesn't overwhelm you with its beauty. Think about this for a second. You go to the mountains and you're kind of overwhelmed by everything that there is to look at. It's almost like it's too much to take all in all at once. Saskatchewan doesn't do that, at least not to me. It's the small things here that matter. And I feel, I feel like that's kind of what the prairie is like. It's, you know, you have these small little places that just make you go, this is nice. So this is one of the cool little secrets that I was talking about. I'm in the middle of the city right now, but there's a, an actual forest trail to go through. And uh, one of the coolest things is right, right here, look, look at that, there's a rock. So this rock right here, just, I mean, yeah, right in the middle of a tiny little forest. Like you would think you're in, uh, in like BC or some enchanted forest from Disney or something, but no, it's just 6 a.m. in the forest of Saskatoon. So does your church need a live stream? Does your church need a live stream? Oh my glass, real foggy. Does your church need a live stream? I think it depends. You see, in COVID-19, you know, if we wanted to, to reach the congregation virtually, then we had to make online services. And that uh, meant, you know, duct tape solutions. And sometimes I feel like that might've been literal. Let me know if your church used duct tape at all during the live stream boom of 2020. At that moment, I think it was necessary for churches to have to innovate or evaporate. In the case now, two years later, COVID-19 kind of died down almost completely. Uh, you know, things are, for the most part, back to normal. People are meeting in person. Um, some churches might, some churches might decide to not have a live stream anymore at all. And I think that that's okay. The, the reason that a church needs a live stream is because it meets the mission of that particular church. If we think that the objective of a church is to grow, then we should still be making content that does not have to be a live stream. Think about this. To actually have a live stream, you would have to invest in possibly thousands of dollars worth of gear and you'll always be having to upgrade. For just to start out, for example, let's say, you have to have a camera, of course, that's the, the most obvious thing. You have to have decent lighting to light your stage. You have to have really good sound. You have to then set up all the software required, and that's oftentimes a monthly cost. Before you know it, you're thousands, if not tens of thousands or more into that live stream setup. Why? If it's because it's part of your church's mission, then by all means, you should. You, you, you really should. I mean, look at Mike Todd's church. He, before COVID even happened, years ago, he decided that as a church, they were going to invest in our live stream setup uh, heavily. So he put in thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into a live stream and it didn't really take off for years until shortly before COVID, all of a sudden he went viral. And now they're one of the most well-known churches in the United States. But that was the thing though. He knew that he was feeling called by God that it was part of the church's mission. Is your church called to have a live stream? I, I can't answer that for you, of course, but maybe here's some alternatives though. 
instead of having a live stream, what about having just a sermon recap on video? It could just be done using an iPhone. Like I'm using my iPhone right now. Instead of it having to be a live stream with all of the these moving parts, you really could just have on a Monday morning or Tuesday or whenever you go back to the office after Sunday, you could have the pastor give a recap of his sermon, have it be 15, 20 minutes, and then you post it. You don't have to do a lot of post production. You don't have to edit it that much. You can just, you know, cut pieces. You can do as much or as little as you want. From there, you can even make content, little nuggets throughout the week of key pieces that he said. You could do that with a live stream, of course, too. But for sake of simplicity, you could just use your iPhone, mount it on a tripod, and have the pastor speak into the phone. And that will cost you a phone that you might already have, a tripod for 20, 30 bucks tops, and maybe a microphone if you really so decide to do so. Uh, there's actual microphone attachments that you can use that you plug right into your phone. And then voila, you have yourself a vlogging phone camera setup. Right now, people are looking more towards content that is engaging and personalized. So even like a talking head video, like what this is technically, me talking to you and my head's moving around, that is a lot more appealing to people right now content-wise than a full production value sermon series that has, you know, tons of camera angles and special effects maybe and like all these things. Again, I'm not knocking that. Um, that's actually really cool. And in fact, our church is trying to do that. We decided part of our mission is to have a, have a live stream production. So we're working towards that. But again, not every church is like that. So think about that. Maybe grab a phone. Record yourself. Do a 20 minute sermon. Post it on Instagram and Facebook or whatever you wanna use. And see where that goes. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Think about what your church needs, what your church's needs are. And go from there. Well, Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below, and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon.